Hey everyone and welcome back for another rail fan adventure. Today we're in one of the busiest rail yards in the Norfolk Southern System in Minyard in Atlanta. You can see the Atlanta skyline off in the distance. The yard itself is northwest of the downtown area. I made a long weekend trip to see my wonderful girlfriend and with flights into the world's busiest airport so expensive, I decided to drive. I knew I'd have about an hour or so before I needed to start heading north on I-75 to return home, so I packed my drone and radio. We'll take a look around and catch a train leaving the yard at the very end. We'll also briefly see what's left, or well, I guess taking the place of CSX's Tilford Yard next door. You can see it there on the left side of the screen. Back to the NS Yard. This was taken on a Sunday and there was plenty of action. In fact, this is about as busy of a yard as I've seen. Unfortunately though, I couldn't find much history on it. In fact, I couldn't even find out why it's named Inman Park for sure. I'm assuming it's named in honor of either Samuel Inman, a businessman from the area, or Inman Park, the neighborhood named in Inman's honor, but I couldn't find anything as to why. I'll share what little info I could find and then just put some of the radio chatter I heard over the rest of the footage. I hope to come back and rail fan the yard and city more in the future. Norfolk Southern says this is the largest of its three intermodal yards, but looking around, you can see there's a decent amount of what I'll just call regular freight. This yard was built in 1957 by the Southern Railway is one of seven hump yards in its system. The latest information I could find says this is no longer used as a general freight classification yard and instead focuses on intermodal. There were several smaller satellite yards in the Atlanta area for general freight business, but some posts online say that those were being closed as of 2020. The yard hump here is intact, but what I could find says that this is block swapping only. I tried to take a closer look and didn't see any brake retarders on any of the bowl tracks. The hump was originally shut down in 1993 when NS management decided it was more efficient to use the bowl to re-block intermodal traffic. Inman Yard would no longer be a focal point for classifying manifest traffic. Instead, that workload would be moved to surrounding yards. The company had four other hump yards within a 200 mile radius of Inman. I believe Chattanooga is the only nearby hump still operational. I plan to stop by there the next time I make the drive down here. At its largest, Inman had 16 receiving tracks, a 65 track classification bowl, 16 departure tracks, an intermodal terminal, and a 20 track intermodal classification yard. With the intermodal push though, that 20 track intermodal yard was taken out and the intermodal ramp was expanded. Eight of the 16 receiving tracks were removed to make room for trailer and container parking. The rest of the yard remains intact and in use today. The yard also has a locomotive shop, and a yard for locals, and a rail welding plant. In a case of Where's Waldo passenger car edition, I did spot this NS car while going through my footage. Not sure what it's doing or where it's heading, but hopefully it's still got a little life left on the rails in some way. I've seen pictures of these green engines before, but never knew much about them. They're low emission locomotives used to move cars around the yard. They were funded in part with federal grants and NS money. The 3,000 horsepower engines meet the EPA's Tier 3 emission standards for locomotives. The Eco units were developed in partnership with Progress Rail as part of a sustainability initiative aimed at reducing air pollution in urban areas. The units feature green paint, a Georgia-shaped icon, and the slogan, Working Together for a Cleaner State. The yard started off with 10 of the new locomotives in 2015. They replaced the older, less fuel-efficient engines at the yard, which served about 75 freight trains at the time. The program expanded to rail yards in Macon and Rome, Georgia, and Chicago. Back to that CSX facility real quick. The hump at Tilford Yard was ordered bulldozed in 2017. It was part of the company's switch to the much-loved Precision Scheduled Railroading. CSX then ripped up all the rails and built a transload center. It doesn't look open right now, and I don't see any tracks anywhere, so if anyone knows anything about this, please do let me know. And if you have anything interesting or noteworthy about Inman Yard, please do leave it in the comments. I'm kind of bummed that I didn't find any more information on it. Before I let you go, that train I promised you will be at the very end of the video. It's pulling out to the northwest of the yard and it's getting ready to cross the Chattahoochee River. Meanwhile, the next train video I'm working on is the rest of my drive home. I made a couple stops along the NS main line in Tennessee and Kentucky. We'll end up catching four trains as we do it. I hope to have that video out shortly. Until then, I hope you enjoy the rest of the footage, and I hope you have a great day. When you go to 61, uh, grab the head car. It should be an empty. We'll put it in 62.
Yeah, then we'll go back to 61 with holding the racks and get it all at 261. So 49 for the, for the one car and then 46, 45. Yeah. Oh, me, I, I, I forgot all about that horse thing. Yeah, dude, 27A. He was a Vanderbilt Commodore, you forgot about it. Oh. You can you get uh, all the way up through here, Lorenzo. We're gonna get high the king switch. Huh? Yeah, you get all the way to the south end of these fences. Set that one down in 21 right for the time being. Hey, Trey. Three step take flight, conductor 27 8, 10 93. Alright, two more. Uh,
keep letting me know 245 to life, brother. 
trying to get ready for that Blake uh, fill in on second shift. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And one final note, in 2018, Norfolk Southern announced it was moving its headquarters from Norfolk, Virginia to Atlanta and bringing with it 850 jobs and more than $500 million in economic investment. The glass line building you're looking at is more than 750,000 square feet of office space in the city's midtown area.